Hello viewers, SuperGT here. A recent addition to Gran Turismo 7 is this circuit here, the no chicane layout of the Barcelona Catalunya Grand Prix circuit. This is what it looks like. But normally you turn right into here. This is the chicane, uh, which was added many years ago. Uh, there's not normally those bollards there, to be fair. You no, don't normally have to knock them down. But this is the no chicane layout, where you drive around the outside of it a lot higher speed and then you go into the final corner carrying a lot more speed than you normally would. This is a layout they have been using in MotoGP still but in F1 they've not been using it for a very long time. Now for the race coming up in daily race C you have to use the hard tyre and the medium tyre which made it quite interesting. I decided to set a lap on the hard tyre which is a 41.4 which is an okay lap I guess but then just see what I could do on a medium and pause it before the line so I don't actually set a lap. So maybe a mid 40, low 40. So on the grid, uh, the 41.4 put us in 13th. And I wanted to test really how good the overtaking was around this circuit. And uh, we had this comment, get good. Well, we're about to show him. We're about to show him what's good. What's coming up in this race. Because this one it was a very exciting and very fun race. As we, as we begin, 10 laps of the Nochecane circuit of uh, Barcelona. Uh, most people are going for the Porsche 911. Uh, tire wear is quite high in this race. And so uh, you want a car that deals with that quite well. The Porsche tends to be that. Now through turns one and two, we've already got many cars stricken into the gravel. These two cars go side by side. So I think, okay, well, I've got the inside of that guy. He has a five second penalty. Let's try to do a nice little mid corner switcheroo. Look at that. That might be the new switcheroo. Then we're eventually going to go up the inside into turn four. Uh, so that's quite a good start. Started 13th up into P9 already. Four positions gained. And we've only done four corners. That's not too bad. Just trying to keep it nice and pinned on the inside so we don't get old switcherooed. This is a replay of what happened. This is the guy who got the five second penalty and it was for this contact here and yeah just uh, it's all a bit silly really isn't it this is what caused all of it and uh, this guy seemingly forgetting where his brake pedal is eventually finding it but uh, it was too late by that point uh, yeah so not ideal now back on board coming out of turn number five uh, this guy's day was about to get even worse so he's already got himself a five second penalty, lost a few positions, and then boom! A perpendicular meeting with uh, Barriar, the Spanish Barriar. And uh, yeah, his day went from about an eight down to a zero very quickly. Now, we are P9, lap one of 10. On the hard tyre, starting the race on the harder of the two compounds that we'll go over onto the medium later on. And uh, it's one of those where I'm kind of working out as we go along because I don't actually know the strategy at this point. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Through the fast sweeping sector now, this is the no chicane part of the circuit and it's actually quite tricky to follow another car through there. The visibility isn't the best. And of course it is a very fast sweeping sector. Down the main straight, are we gonna be able to get past the check driver here? We're gonna pull out to the inside, taking as much slipstream as possible. Looking for our breaker point, which is the black marker board just before the 100 board on the left. Heading into the apex nicely, and we get the position up into eight. Our next victim being this uh, Swiss driver. See how many um, corners it takes to try to get past him. Now, Catalonia isn't always the best track for overtaking, certainly in Formula One. Lots of high speed or medium speed uh, corners, which makes it quite tricky to overtake. It makes it very tricky to follow another car and that's one of the reasons why they even made the chicane in the first place because Formula 1 cars just could not follow each other closely through that final sector with a very fast final two right-handers on this circuit so that's why they made the chicane um, but of course in sort of the GT3 car which we're driving here it should be a little bit easier there is still quite a fair amount of aero on these cars the Swiss driver is going to drive a little bit wide there through turn 9. He's not going to get the best of exits onto this mid straight. And he's kind of gone over to the right hand side quite early. That's going to be quite an easy move up the inside. And uh, there's going to be P7. 
they're doing a good job so far getting the positions when we need to have a bit of a gap to the cars in front although that gap came down slightly as the guy in front called tears of e-girls made a bit of a mistake he had a penalty i think through the final two corners lap number three he's got a little bit darker at this point and oh he's racing about to get a bit darker as he makes a bit of a mistake on the final corner loses the crucial momentum and we're up into p6 beautiful stuff we're in our natural habitat but i'm sure we can move further forward as you can see the two cars in front making contact as they head in towards turn number one now we're going to be looking at that and trying to catch up the best we can we're only 4.9 4.8 seconds off the lead 4.4 by the end of that lap as um cheesy goes into the pit lane and he changes tires what's he going to go from he's on the hard he's going to go onto the medium after four laps at the end of lap five the car in front went in as well i was going to do one more i, I really wasn't quite sure on the strategy at this point uh, but at the end of lap six I follow these other two guys in they happen to both be on the medium tire so it seems as though the medium can do five or six laps Whereas I'm only going to do four on it, but those you have to learn some somehow. So the Porsche boys there doing a fantastic job as ever. And we change over onto the medium. Let's see what position we're going to come out in. Making sure we don't cross the pit exit line on the left there. There's P6. We're back to P6. But we are now on the strongest tyre to the end of the race. We've only got four laps to do. But we can push quite hard here and try to gain as many positions as possible. Uh, just four seconds away from the lead so we're actually not doing too bad of a job in fact the leader was just in sight there now these two guys are going to go hammer and tong bit of argy bargy brick goes through against the south african who clearly didn't take too kindly to that move as it was somewhat forceful and he comes back in and returns the favor so i'm going to gain a position for free there and it's this sort of conflict that you really do need to avoid and he goes very slow here, so we're going to go past him. Two positions for free. Thank you very much. We'll take it. So the guy who's telling us to get good is our next victim right in front. And uh, it does feel quite funny when you, you, you come from quite far back in the pack and you manage to catch up. But we'll see how easy it's going to be to overtake. Not quite close enough here into the hairpin, so we're going to have to bide our time for now then through this final sector not easy to overtake through here really unless the driver in front makes a mistake so all we can do is really just keep the pressure on and see if he does at the moment though not quite doing that and not quite able to carry the speed and this is the difficulty i was having uh, which is just to stay close to the car in front through those final two corners and therefore i could not quite get a good run onto the main straight which is probably the best overtaking opportunity on the lap the longest straight to the biggest breaking point normally is always the best place to overtake on any track it wasn't quite working out for me here and i was kind of in the same boat as most formula one drivers during the 90s who just could not follow through that sector and couldn't therefore really get a move done into turn one but see the battle was just brewing here between myself Cheesy and the guy in second, the, the German driver here, all in the Porsche 911. Uh, the leader by this point, still just under four seconds ahead, but my progress was being hampered here. And this is the problem with this strategy, which is coming out in traffic. You're on the strong tyre, you can't quite make the most of it because you are stuck behind other cars. But uh, we're going to do our best here to try to overtake as soon as possible. So through the uphill turn six and seven, and maximizing the speed on the exit and then turn nine at the top of the hill here really about getting that exit speed dead right carrying as much speed as possible right on the edge of the track limits can we go for the almighty send of the century into the hairpin yes we can late on the brakes get to the apex don't overcook it the german goes really wide does not get on the power very well and i'm up the inside so it's going to be two overtakes in one corner pretty much off to second and now I can turn my attention to try to catching up with the leader of the race, who is now 3.9 seconds ahead. So unfortunately I've not really gained on this lap. The leader is currently on, I do believe he's on the hard tyre, so I should be able to catch up. But I've only got two laps left to do it. Setting the fastest lap on lap number 8 there. Lap number 9 going slightly quicker, to a 40.4. The gap 3 seconds by this point. And by the end you can see I definitely caught up. 
but it wasn't going to be enough. Uh, so the Dutchman there coming through to win the race. And it was going to be a one and a half second gap in the end. And I think if a couple of things went a little bit differently, maybe if I had pitted a bit earlier, it could have worked out. But ultimately, it was a really good race. And you see they're 1.5 seconds away from the race victory. But second place, 11 positions gained, fastest lap and a clean race. So quite happy with that. And here's a little bonus replay. So this guy started 11th. And he just picked his way through all of the carnage. Three positions gained very quickly. And, well, he's loving life. I decided to jump into qualifying in the BRZ Subaru. This is a car which is very quick through these fast sweeping corners, as you can see. And it's dominating the leaderboard at the moment. And I actually couldn't really get to grips with this car. Uh, excuse the pun. I found it actually quite tricky to drive. It's got lots of grip, but you have to drive in a very certain way, a way that I couldn't easily. I, I was just getting penalties. Decided to quit. I decided, well, maybe it was the livery. Surely it was the livery. If I put this livery on, it must go quicker. Surely that's how it works, right? I still couldn't really maximize the pace of the car before the game actually crashed. I think the game was giving me a signal. Don't use this car, you're not very good in it. Eventually, after maybe 10, 20 minutes of practice, I was able to go slightly quicker by about a tenth than the time I set in the Porsche. But I decided um, after this mistake here for the final corner, actually, you know what? Yeah, I just don't like this car. I'm going to go back into the Porsche. It's a car I know better. It's a car I know better how to drive. And uh, we got our lap time down. You see the, um, uh, the consistency there. So a fair amount of laps. Uh, so a load of 39.6s, followed by a 39.7, and then a 39.5. So good consistency. We were just chipping away slowly at that lap time. By this point, it was a 39.5. Then we improve it to a 39.4. And I was just finding pace through those final two corners. Quite tricky to get right. Join the next race. Error message. AF16400. One of my favourite error messages to be honest, but it was quite annoying because I wanted to race. It did give me time just to try to improve my lap time though, to be fair. And we did exactly that, setting at 39, and actually no, we didn't. That's exactly the same time as our best. A bit annoying. Then we go a little bit quicker there. 39.434, and I was kind of content with that. I could have, I reckon I could get a low 39 if I pushed that a little bit more. But let's start this race, right? Because this one was quite uh, a simple race in many regards. I'll, I'll show you what happened. Because this Porsche crashed. And then it was really a race of myself against the Subaru BRZ. And the BRZ, as I mentioned just a moment ago, really quick in the corners. Especially the fast sweeping corners. And you see here the difference. As uh, he's just able to carry much more speed. I do lose a bit of speed hitting the cone to be fair. But... That car was just so fast through this final corner, I just could not keep up. And there was no chance of me going for a move into turn one. And that was basically the story of the race. I could keep up, but I could just never quite be close enough where it really mattered. So you see that the gap the car opens up in that final turn is just absolutely ridiculous. Nothing I could do. Ultimately finishing P3 and uh, just five seconds off the race win. But then I jumped into this one. And I felt like there was a chance, if I did something a little bit different, every race I've done so far started on the hard, then swapped to the medium. But this one, well, I got called dad, so it, it, it seems I've got more children out there that I don't know about. I felt like if I started on the medium, went aggressive at the beginning, and then tried to hold track position, then perhaps I could win the race that way instead. Because as I said, every race I've done so far started on the hard, then gone on to the medium and when you do that you're always chasing the race you're always having to overtake people late on whereas this one we're going to try and get the work done early and then try to conserve our lead if we can do that so i'm assuming here that matthew is on the hard tire i'm not sure normally if you're in the lead you should go onto the softest available but i'm keeping up quite easily here so i'd say that he must be on the hard tire and looking for a move here, not really close enough to go for it. Um, you see here the traction you get with a softer tyre. I was able to get a much better exit down the hill into turn six. Up the inside we go. 
There is a bit of contact, and I was wondering if that was a clean move. Uh, but I did check the replay, and I felt like it. I felt like it was. I just went a little bit deep, and he kind of turned in a bit early, I would say. But I think it's all good. So now into the lead. It's really a case of maximising the tyre potential. Uh, let's just push on the medium tyre. He's on the hard. We can just try pull away now for five or six laps. I think the golden ratio is to do six laps on the medium and then four on the hard. And a lot of viewers ask, why is it that you do more laps on the softer tyre? It's really just because the softer tyre is faster and it doesn't actually wear out that much. So even on a, even a worn out medium is still faster than a new hard tyre, as such is the pace difference. So normally you don't want to spend too long on the hardest tyre, that's normally what it is. At the end of lap one, just putting away there, we've got a one second gap already, which is quite good. End of lap two, got a two second gap. And in fact, it was the guy in third who was also in the Porsche, also on the mediums, who was actually very quick and he was actually giving me a very good race. He was two seconds behind, we got some nice consistent laps as you can see, three laps there within a tenth, but not too bad. Um, but this guy in second, he kind of mimicked my strategy um, and therefore it was quite a close race between the two of us. By this point here, this was lap five, so he was getting quite close, he was within what, within two seconds, about 1.7 behind. Uh, so he was doing a good job of keeping me in check and he wasn't going to let me have an easy race here. But then, well he was actually, because he made this mistake. Very easy to do that. It looks so innocuous, but it was actually quite an easy mistake to make and I was doing it quite a lot in practice. But that opened up the gap. Now about 3.8, 3.9 seconds. Gave me a bit of breathing room. So, end of lap five. A decent gap, decent margin. End of lap six, into the pit lane. And uh, that is our medium stint done. The tie is really screaming. Um, really not doing very well by that point in the race. Um, but we come in, change over to the hard tyre, and let's see what the gap is going to be. So we're still in third, a couple of cars still yet to pit, and I was kind of surprised because Matthew was still out on the hard tyre. He's doing, I think, too many laps on the hard, kind of like I did in the first race of this video. Uh, so now getting comfortable with the hard tyre in this stint, on to lap eight, three laps left to go. And we're going to try and see where Matthew is, because he is about to emerge from the pit lane. And here he is. So you see there that pixel in the far distance, that is me. And then uh, Rido comes through. So now Matthew is on the stronger tyre, he's on the medium. But he's only got three laps to maximise it, which is probably not enough. Uh, so I have a four and a half second margin by this point. So I'm looking fairly comfortable, it must be said. And I think the strategy kind of paid off, really, because going aggressive, also getting the overtake done early in the race, really helped so you can maximise the tyre potential. Um, but there's about to be this weird incident between the two guys behind, and this is the main downfall of coming out in traffic, that, you know, you're going to have to try to overtake another car. They have this weird incident where it's kind of strange. I don't think either of them really meant it, of course. Just there. You know, it looked like a weird little pit manoeuvre, an inadvertent pit manoeuvre. As, uh, yeah, I mean, that kind of happens sometimes, but both of the cars got very close and kind of got stuck on each other. And that lost Matthew about a second, so the gap was down to about, or up to a 5.5, with only two laps left to go, and it's going to be very difficult for him to kind of, kind of reel in that much time within only two laps. But yes, the medium tyre is definitely quicker, but... Uh, by the end of the race, we got the gap down to about three seconds. You can see here, this is the final sector of lap 10. You can see I'm well within sight, and he definitely did bring that gap down. Uh, it makes me wonder if he didn't have that incident, and perhaps if he pitted one lap earlier, he may well have had a chance of re-overtaking me for the lead. So it would have been very close if he had changed a couple of little things there, but we're going to come across the line to win the race. But yeah, I really actually enjoyed this new circuit, the no chicane version. I think it flows very nicely. It's very fun to drive uh, rather than that ghastly chicane. But uh, let me know your thoughts, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you next time. Goodbye.